Move over, Toby. There's a new Spider-Man in town. Is it better than the original? Yes, yes it is. And Batman and Robin is the best Batman film. See how the lies are stacking up already? Tune in. Bonesaw knows Spider-Man has the better cast, and that starts with Tobey Maguire. When he dons the suit, he transforms from a lovable dweeb into the friendly neighborhood crime fighter. I feel like Tobey Maguire plays the same nice, cheesy-looking guy in every movie he's in. Have you seen Pleasantville? Then you've seen every Tobey Maguire movie. Wow, great reflexes. Andrew Garfield fits both Peter Parker and Spider-Man. He adds depth to the character. He's just an emo skateboarder. When he throws the thing on, he's kind of a spider dick. You know, if you're gonna steal cars, don't dress like a car thief. You found my weakness. It's small knives. Emma Stone as Gwen Stacy was great. What I liked about her is that she had actual screen time and she was brilliant within it. Kristen Dunst was just kind of Princess Peach, always in trouble. I can't believe she's lived to be 17 years old. I can't really knock Emma Stone in the film. I mean, she's a strong leading lady, she's independent, she's attractive. What does Kristen Dunst bring to the table? Oh wait. I don't even know how to pronounce the villain's name in Amazing Spider-Man. Uh, Candace, can you just put it up on the bottom of the screen here? Thanks. It's, it's this guy. Uh, he was the brother in Little Nicky. I will say what I liked about the Amazing Spider-Man villain is you see a lot of Dr. Connors. You see the development of him being the lizard. I thought that was missing from the original Spider-Man. Since 2002, Spider-Man is a little campy and intentionally cheesy. William Defoe's Green Goblin fits in perfectly. We're gonna have a hell of a time. Yeah. Spider-Man wastes no time getting the story into full swing. The amazing Spider-Man spends damn near an eternity on trivial matters like where Peter Parker gets his glasses from. Really? His glasses? The amazing Spider-Man showed that Peter Parker was more than meets the eye. He was actually a brilliant scientist, top of his class, and the original Spider-Man left all that out. As I watched The Amazing Spider-Man, I kept asking myself, why was this movie made? It takes a ton of plot points from the 2002 Spider-Man with less impact. You have the school fight against that bully Booster or Rocket or whatever dumb name they gave him. It paled in comparison to the bullet time version they had in the first one. You have the villain who starts bickering with himself towards the end of the movie, much like Green Goblin did throughout the old film. And they rehash the killing of Ben again in this one. The Amazing Spider-Man is all about character development, and you see that even with side characters like Flash, as Adam pointed out. By the end of the film, they're almost friends because they knew they had an understanding about both of their pasts. Martin Sheen as Uncle Ben was better than the original for one factor. He actually cared as a parent about Peter Parker. You don't need cheesy lines to know that relationship was true. You also saw the struggle that Peter Parker had with his parents leaving, constantly trying to find out more information and getting upset when they talked about it. Anytime director Sam Raimi threw a little bullet time into Spider-Man, my spider senses tingled. That sounded sexual, and that's fine. I'm having a hard time even remembering fighting in the new one. I think he spins a web around Dr. Croc or whatever at one point and says, that's a wrap. Oh, he didn't say that? Oh, I was just inserting dialogue because I was trying to not fall asleep at that point. Adam must have forgotten the 10 minute sequence where he goes around trying to find the guy who's got the little tattoo on his wrist. Oh, I remember. 
I remember him scaling like three-story buildings and henchmen just being everywhere. Like one of those old Nintendo games where they pop up and you shoot them. They developed a camera for the original film called the Spider Cam that flew through buildings. I mean, that's why you get some of those amazing high flying swinging shots that you don't really see in the new picture. I honestly don't think there was any musical score made for The Amazing Spider Man. I think Adam had this on mute, and that's maybe why he missed all these great parts. Lincoln Park must have been busy that day. 2002 Spider-Man, on the other hand, had a fantastic musical score, bombastic sounds. Anytime the action ramped up, you get an American flag shot in there, Spider-Man swinging, money. I'm just glad they didn't bring Chad Kroger back for the soundtrack. I think, I think we can all agree on that. I'm so high. Without 2002 Spider-Man, we wouldn't have superhero films today. If it was the other way around and the Amazing Spider-Man came out first, we'd be in trouble, folks. Cast your vote. I wish the Amazing Spider-Man was done in 2002. Then maybe we wouldn't have all these over-cheesy, over-colored superhero movies. We've got two different takes of Spider-Man, both fairly true to their comic book series. Let us know what you think. Do you like the Amazing Spider-Man better than the original? Or do you think Tobey Maguire fits the bill? More than just reviews, this is Movie Fuse.